Hello, I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's draw the eye of Tyrannosaurus Rex. When reconstructing a dinosaur's eyes, we often determine the approximate size of its eyes based on the size of the eye sockets. But in recent years, we've learned that the size of a dinosaur's eyes is actually related to the size of the sclerotic rings. In addition to the size, we also need to pay attention to many other aspects when reconstructing a dinosaur's eyes such as the shape of the pupils. Extant animals with sclerotic rings generally have round pupils, so we speculate that most dinosaurs had round pupils. In addition to the eyes themselves, we also need to pay attention to the structures around the eyes during reconstruction. Now, let's reconstruct the eyes of Tyrannosaurus rex. First, use dotted lines to show the bone structure of the eyes of Tyrannosaurus rex. Draw the lacrimal bone at the front of the eye first. Then determine the position of the eye socket. At the back of the eye, draw the postorbital bone. Its brow ridge was also a bulging structure. This information comes from bone fossils. Apart from bone fossils, other evidence can also help us complete the eye structure of Tyrannosaurus rex. For example, there is evidence of a very large keratinous structure between the lacrimal bone and the brow ridge. This makes the area above the brow ridge look sharp. Now, let's complete this keratinous structure. The front end of this keratinous structure connects to its lacrimal horn. Its lacrimal horn might also have a prominent bulging structure. Next, move on to its eyes. We used to determine the size of a dinosaur's eyes based on the size of the eye sockets. Therefore, in early reconstructions, the eyes of Tyrannosaurus rex were usually made very large, but now we know that the size of their eyes is actually related to the size of the sclerotic rings. The sclerotic ring is a ring of bones surrounding the eyeball to protect it. Therefore, the exposed part of a dinosaur's eye would match the inner diameter of the sclerotic ring. Let's draw the sclerotic rings of Tyrannosaurus rex before drawing its eyes. Next, let's move on to the eyelids of Tyrannosaurus rex. Reptile eyes generally consist of several structures, upper and lower eyelids surrounding the eyeball. There was a layer between the upper eyelid and the keratinous structure on the head. Under the lower eyelid were several layers of folds. There might be rings of scales on its eyelid. We can concentrate the scales in the dark part of the picture. These scales were larger near the eye and smaller away from it. The keratinous structure above its eyes would shield the eyes from sunlight so that Tyrannosaurus rex wouldn't be dazzled by strong sunlight. Now, let's complete the structures around the eye.
The postorbital bone might be covered with a row of large scales. These large scales were surrounded by some smaller scales. There was a raised bone below the lacrimal bone, but the surface of this bone wasn't rough, so it was likely covered with fine scales. These scales were arranged neatly at first, but as they reached the bottom of the eye, they were arranged along where the skin moved. Finally, let's add some details. For example, there were neatly arranged scales behind its brow ridge and postorbital bone. The skin over its temporal fenestra was covered with fine scales, which will be drawn as folds. The rough skin over the antipodal fenestra was also covered with fine scales, and we can use the same method to represent it. Finally, let's move on to its jugal horn, which can be shown as a bump. Now, we've completed the eyes of the Tyrannosaurus Rex.